Welcome. So if, if you look in your program, it says we're going to talk about how advanced technologies are going to dramatically disrupt healthcare, the entire industry. And today we hope to show you when, how, in what exact specific way it's going to happen and, and the people who are going to be doing it. I'm joined by Sam Nazarian, who many of you recognize as one of the premier hoteliers, innkeepers, I've been told to call you at times, uh, in the world. You know, plush properties, remarkable experiences, really, you know, 21st century slash 22nd century opportunities. And the question, of course, is why is a doctor and someone who gives luxury experiences together sitting on a stage trying to offer some insights about what's going to happen in the healthcare space? And my personal journey in this arena started when I uh, was part owner of Six Senses Hotel Chain, and we were looking at how to build wellness into the experience, because that was the whole uh, mantra of the hotel chain, to put you in a place you couldn't have gotten to normally on your own. And it made the experience very sticky. Uh, at the time, this is you know, seven, eight years ago, it, the, te the technology around healthcare was still advancing, especially with regard to longevity. Uh, but I knew at the time, and many of you could probably acknowledge this, that we win the battle for health in our living rooms, in our kitchens, uh, in our bedrooms. And there's no reason why that shouldn't also happen in hotel lobbies. And frankly, adjusting those behaviors while you're in a, a wonderful, luxurious hotel experience to get people to sleep differently, think about different foods they've never had before, and uh, try exercising, be exposed to innovations that they never believed could exist. And so today we want to blow your mind with that a little bit. And Sam, maybe you can start us off. Uh, give them two seconds about Delano and the other hotel change, SLS, but more importantly, what is your vision of what you hope to do to change the way people think about longevity while they're staying in your facilities? Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Well, I think taking a step back, as you said, you know, 22 years ago, we had this idea of lifestyle. And, you know, the word didn't exist really 22 years ago, but we wanted to inject content, energy, food and beverage design into very, very cool buildings. We started that in Los Angeles. Um, and we grew that from SLS Hotels that I launched in 2006 to the largest lifestyle company in the world. Um, a lot of the hotels here, like Delano Shore Club, uh, SLS Raleigh. But you know, we were, selling a, we were selling experiences. We were selling food and beverage. We were exposing people to great design and, and integration and energy and fun. And by 2019, um, personally for myself, I was not that consumer anymore. I was more a luxury consumer. So I, started to go find hotels around the world, specifically in Europe, where I could go and reset, reboot, lose weight, deal with my orthopedics, talk about hormone therapy, do the things that I've been hearing about, uh, not from my own doctor, but from an unbelievable people like yourselves. You know, you and Tony and really the pioneers of that conversation. So when we went through that process, what we realized with our new brand that we wanted to disrupt, which is a new category in luxury, what would be important to a luxury consumer and that set us off on the journey. Um, and in the last five years, we've been able to really bring some of the best minds in prevention, diagnostic, longevity, hormone therapy, and really the tactical aspects of what give people the ability of knowing the best things about themselves, real time, in a luxury environment. And, uh, and that's really what the estate is. It's, it's really a, a state of mind, but it's bringing these best amazing ideas. People like yourselves who have been talking about this for the last 20 years. Tony Robbins is a partner in our business. Mark Anthony is a partner in our business. So we found some great leaders and amplifiers with the idea of understanding what's going on on the inside. MRI scan, CT scan, bone density, and, and AI, the technology we have that enables everybody in this room to at least know what's going on at the age of 30 or at the age of 60 and 70 years old. And then amplifying that with a real great program um, that can really change people's lives or save, people li save people's lives, more importantly. So let's just unwrap this a little bit. So I, I think about longevity in three different buckets. There's the predictions, DNA testing, epigenetics. There's the prevention, where you have a, an illness, cardiovascular disease, early memory loss, maybe a cancer, autoimmune problems, you can pull that back. And then there's the reversal part of the equation where you can take someone who, because they've done the right things, has lived to age 80, and how do you make them feel like they're 60 so they live to age 100? So as you look at these different ideas, uh, I'm curious how you break them up. And let me ask a quick question of the audience. How many of you have ever, ever had exosomes or stem cells infused for any purpose? Like five people, maybe. How many of you have done a cold plunge? I don't count a shower. Put your hands down up the... Sh now, this is remarkable. 
maybe five out of, how many, 500 people have taken a, a, a more advanced biologic approach, a biohack, and more than half the audience has done some type of cold plunging. Even though, you know, the data on both is, you know, probably uh, skewed the other way. As you look at these different ideas, mm -hmm. I think the reason there are more people doing cold plunges is it's experiential. It's sort of fun once you get past the first 30 minutes of intense pain, mm -hmm. uh, Wim Hof breathing. So h how do you decide how to make that a joyful experience? Uh, well, you know, 10 years ago, if you said go do a cold plunge, you asked your doctor, he thought you were crazy. I mean, institutional medicine has changed so much in certain things like this, but still has so much to go. And me as a layman, you, you were, the, you were the, the face of this and our partners as well is, Right now, the number one thing I would ask is how many people have done a full body MRI scan, right? How many? Yeah, put your hands up, full body MRIs. I mean, th that to me is just the baseline of knowing what's going on in your body. That coupled with some of the other tests that we do now, we partnered exclusively with a company called Fountain Life. Fountain Life has five clinics and they have the most amazing technology that now we are exporting within our, our longevity hubs, urban and our resorts. So we have, in April, we're gonna be announcing a very big pipeline of projects that we've been working on. But it's really, it's almost irresponsible. Somebody said that earlier today about not knowing, even if you're 30 years old, to get a baseline, or if you're a little bit older, to see what is going on with the technology that exists today. You mentioned exosomes, you mentioned stem cells, you know, hormone therapy, testosterone, at any age, specifically around um, the ability of understanding. Our, our chief medical officer, Dr. Helen Messier, she, you know, she is really focusing on women's health, because women's health is really underrepresented within the world of health today. And, I mean, I'm, I was joking with him in the back. It's like I'm playing like, you know, basketball with Michael Jordan. So I'm, I'm going to stop talking about the components. But the one thing we're doing at the estate is we're actually building scale for these ideas. We're building adoption, awareness that these things do exist. Um, you know, personally, I share with you, I went and I got my MRI scan done about six months ago, um, actually four months ago, and they, they found a seven and a half millimeter aneurysm in my brain. I had that removed uh, a month later. You know, not just, hey, this is what you got, good luck. They, they walked me through the process, the best neurosurgeons, and they removed it, you know, and I never have to see a doctor again. But, you know, that alone, by every account, saved my life. It would have it ruptured in two years. You know, 6% of the people in this room have an aneurysm in their brain, right? And that's just math, right? 2% can find the problem before it happens, which ultimately our mission is to start getting decision makers to, get, to, get, to understand this model through luxury, uh, through unbelievable partnerships with Fortune 100 companies, with life insurance companies, and then ultimately get to a point where we're scanning people. For every five, we want to give one away for free, and then ultimately make it a, a, a benefit of every scan that's paid, uh, we, we give away for free. To start understanding to, to most countries in the world, healthcare is the biggest issue. 24% of the GDP of, of the U.S. last year was spent in healthcare. 20, you know, that's one every four dollars. But it's disease care rather than healthcare. And knowing what goes on in your body before it happens is the best way, I think, just common sense. And obviously, we, we, we're, we're stepping on shoulders of your shoulders, uh, Doc, uh, and, and really just giving it scale from a customer experience. You know, going to, going to Johns Hopkins, going to Mayo, going to you know, certain clinics, they're not fun, right? So you don't do it, right? So in, building an environment around luxury, listen, we build hotels all around the world. And when you think about luxury hotels and also operators like us, it's an obligation almost to provide this service or exposure to these ideas, whether you take them or not. But I think we talked about the biggest issue we have right now is institutional medicine saying it doesn't work or don't do it, don't waste your time. But you know, the Braille test, CT scan, MRI, and then when we do find what's, what's going on, then we provide the telehealth components that, that, that Found Life has been so amazing at, um, and we're leveraging their platform. So you raise the, the issue of access. By the way, I want one of the free MRIs, if yeah. I have a choice. Who wants a free MRI? Right, we all want the free ones. Uh, but the reality, of course, is that so much of what we're trying to identify isn't readily accessible. And there's two reasons. One is the <coughs> cost, which we'll come to, and the other is knowledge base. So you mentioned hormone replacement therapy. Yeah. And if you go to an average academic center and talk to an, an OBGYN specialist, they're not going to think much of hormone replacement therapy. It'll generally get poo-pooed yep. because of historical data showing that, it's, that some types of these hormones could cause problems in, in older women. But it really isn't relevant to the bioidentical hormones that are used widely with great success for you know, perimenopausal women in America, yet that's still a battle. 
So what is your game plan to deal with the local physicians who are taking care of your clients when they come to the hotel and they get an MRI scan and identify some problem that the doctor doesn't think needs to be treated or didn't think needed to be looked at, or more classically, hormones and uh, the, the, uh, the battle about whether you should be getting peptides or hormones or not? Listen, I, I think to us, again, I'm talking about this on, you know, on behalf of our, our clinical team and our medical team, the, the first thing we want to do is expose people that these things exist. Right? You know, the layman doesn't know these things exist. And if they, if they know it exists, then they'll try it. If they try it based off of machines from GE and Siemens, you know, right now it's, you know, AI is getting so predictive of knowing what you're going to get. What does your genealogy look like? You know? When you go to the doctor now, you sit down with your doctor and, and they say, how are you feeling? Let's go through your blood work. Right? And they give you these kind of benchmarks. Everybody's different, right? Yep. I mean, everybody's different. You know, I'm different, you're different. How is our sleep? How, how are the things that are really driving us to be healthier? And you know, I said, I'm not the epitome of health up here, but if you looked at me a year ago, I was 40 pounds heavier. I had an aneurysm in my brain that was a ticking time bomb, and my testosterone level was 300, and I just had a knee replacement that I, in theory, shouldn't have had because I could have done it with exosomes. And, you know, these are the things that a layman can bring to an industry who, ne who needs scale. And to us, you know, identifying great chefs and putting them in 20 locations, you know, that's, you know, telling a story. In the world of luxury today, and this is kind of what we found, is that consumer wants something better, and they want something that's going to make them, make their lives better. And if we can do that, then we really have a, an amazing customer for life, but we've saved lives, right? And I think to your point, we're, we're going to just get you the data. You can either deal with your own doctor, you can educate yourself, more importantly, Right? Or number three is we then have one year and two year uh, 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 platforms that can actually walk you through your life coach, your diet coach, all done through telehealth. So by one doctor on property, we can then unlock the value that found life. And some of the other great clinical teams uh, and brands. So we don't, we don't want to just be selling one product. We want to, we want to be the hub of great ideas coming uh, globally. Um, and uh, it, it, both urban and, and, and resort properties that we're about to announce a pretty big pipeline with. And that's why I think AI will play a major role in this, because the access issues, it's only going to be available to a lot of folks if there's an inexpensive way for us to interpret all the data that you'll be collecting. Yeah. There's a company called iHerb, it's the largest online health food store in the world. iHerb succeeds in 180 countries because they take the best health food store experience you can get in midtown Manhattan or LA and make it available all over the planet. And it thrives because it has allowed access. Even if it didn't dramatically change anything else, yeah just from that very reason that it provides access. I think if you're able to build this and you have AI models that can help me understand what I or you or anybody else in this audience might benefit from based on the tens of thousands of people who have come in for customized bespoke treatment yeah. at your clinics, it'll, it'll make this accessible. It does, however, raise the issue of what therapies are the low-lying fruit that everyone should be using and which are the ones we should be maybe holding back on because they remain unproven. And that's gonna put extra pressure on the, the, you in particular as a, as a luxury operator, because you could probably offer everything, but you'll get some heat for offering things that the average physician doesn't think should be offered. Who's gonna navigate that? Well, I think, I mean, our, our medical team, you know, and really betting on Fount Life and what they've already started to doing, you know, great partners like, as you know, Peter Diamantes and, and, and Bob Hariri, and number one guy in the world in stem cell, to you know, guys like David Sinclair. And, and I mean, these are the minds and I put you at the top of the list, Doc, that have really been, been yelling off the, uh, off on top of the buildings that this is something that's there. And I think for me, as just a layman who comes in as a hospitality guy who understands scale and luxury and residential, it just was common sense, you know? And, and it, it saved my life and it saves, lives, it saves the lives of people every day who, who understand the predictive nature of what is out there today. But I think to your point, we're not gonna change everyone's life unless the data shows it, right? So collecting healthy data, a 25-year-old, a 30-year-old, 35-year-old that's not sick, that going back into the AI algorithm, that's the most coveted data by any medical institution, yeah? any hospital. Yep. And the more we can do that, the more that the algorithm will learn you know, and, and be predictive. And, and ultimately, you, know, you have brands, as I said, like Lanzaroff. I mean, Six Senses was so game-changing and disruptive. It was so forward-thinking. It, it, it set an amazing chord of, 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 of a real benchmark of, of what luxury consumers should want. I mean, they're all over. I mean, Canyon Ranch, I think, was 30 years ahead of its time. You have the, the ranch in Malibu, but you can count them on a hand. Yep. On a hand, how many places there are in, in the U.S. today that you can go and experience this reboot. Now, none of them have the technical capacity that we're bringing to the table, and none of them are really focused around dealing with you before you get there. 
right? And then dealing with you after, and right, really being a solution. And, and, and that's where I think it's just a no-brainer, no pun intended for me. Um, and um, so that, that's, that's what we've uh, we, we started. That's, that's last point. Is it a good business? Does it make it stickier for your clients when they come and they get a whole potpourri of, of treatments, get exposed to ideas they've never thought of? You think that'll get them coming back, and you think there'll be lots of others who will try to copy what you're trying to accomplish? We hope other people will copy. I mean, that's, that's our mission, right? Our mission, and Tony Robbins, as you guys saw here last year, and, and what he's done with the book Life Force, and, and his mission, he's not doing this, you know, uh, other than changing people's lives and changing perception and awareness. So for us, we definitely hope people copy. We definitely hope people, there's companies like Pernuva, there's, there's great places that talk about, and, and you, know, you can go to your local hospital and get certain things done, but ultimately, we hope that we are one of the many voices following your lead and everyone's lead who's really been an advocate of understanding. Luxury, luxury is really where the decision makers go. And if the decision makers have a great experience, they will make it a company-wide, a family-wide, and their ecosystem. And then we get the pricing down where everybody does this. Don't you want to get to the car accident, right, before it happens, right? And just common sense. And that, that's what exists today. Um, and uh, it's, it's really powerful stuff. I mean, I, I just, it's so, um, the curiosity that I've had and being, putting myself around people like yourselves is just astonishing that most people just don't know that it exists because the doctors are saying, don't do the MRI scan, you're going to find a bunch of false negatives. Well, GE now is making MRI scans where you don't even need a radiologist. You need, you know, it's 37 minutes, head to toe, and you have a benchmark. You know if that cancer is there, you know if whatever the, whatever the, the situation is, it's better to find it in the first first inning than it is in the eighth inning. I think that's just common sense, yeah? Well, you, you lived it yourself. Uh, I mean, the, the epiphany of realizing you could be dead right now. Because yeah. these, these, these annuals is bursting. Your only warning sign is the worst headache you have in your life, and that's it. And it's all over. And even when we get to operate, these results are quite poor. Saudi Arabia is, I think, doing some wise investing in, um, in shifting mindsets by trying to leapfrog, in some cases, where the West is. Do you think there, there are countries outside the West that might actually take the lead in this, especially if they have big data abilities? Well, I definitely think what's happening in, in, in Neom and Alula and these healthcare hubs, that, I mean, we've spent a lot of time in the kingdom, um, and we've seen that they've actually designated an area for this, of, of the best hotels, Clinique La Paris and, and Lanzaroff and Shaw and Shaw Wellness, but literally, even those hotels, there's three or four or one, right? So uh, I, I think that's, that's definitely the kingdom. I think, honestly, right now, you go to Switzerland, you go to the Dolomites, where all these ideas first started coming. Um, Switzerland right now is, has always been the leader in that. Our first hotel will be announced in Lake Geneva in Switzerland, the first estate. But you know, that's where I think culturally they've, they've made a big bet over the last 20 or 30 years in, in things that are predictive and, and preventative. Um, but I think the kingdom will far and surpass that. I think the UAE... I think you know, different parts of, of Asia look at a more holistic component of wellness, uh, you know. Um, so I, I, it, to me, it's, it, it's, it, it makes all the, com you know, it's common sense. And, but here as we sit in the room, five people raise their hands on getting a full body MRI. And I think that should hopefully next time, next year, it will be half the room who at least know what's going on inside um, and, and can execute all these amazing visions that we heard about so far today. Visit an estate in order to get a free MRI. Sam? You're going to do great. Thank Congratulations. You so, thank you so much. Thank you.